The sound of distant deer hunters is about all you'll hear along this remote tree-lined corridor, a stretch of the longest land border between two countries. On one side, Canada. On the other, the U.S. But this lonely spot is also the gateway to an American geographic oddity, Minnesota's Northwest Angle. Most people up here are adventurous or crazy or, <laughs> or both. <laughs> On a map, it looks as if someone put a substantial part of Minnesota in Canada by mistake. In fact, it was a mistake made in 1783 during the Treaty of Paris. The border being drawn between the U.S. and then Britain was supposed to cut through Lake of the Woods at a northwest angle, hence the name. Problem was, the map the Founding Fathers used of Lake of the Woods was completely wrong. The lake actually looks like this. They were way off, but that weird boundary bump stuck. Ever since, the angle, as locals like to call it, has remained an outlier. The only overland route to this part of Minnesota is actually through Canada on a gravel road. There's no fence, no guard, no official looking anything, really, until you come upon this shed called Jim's Corner. Passport? It houses a video phone so that arriving travelers like us can check in with U.S. immigration before driving on. There's no grocery store, no hospital, no theater, no fast food restaurant, not even a single traffic light. It's lucky to have a post office. This is gonna go good. But what it does have... What the heck you got, Dan? I think I got a tiger by the tail. <laughs> ...is fish. <laughs> the sprawling, chilly waters of Lake of the Woods offer some of the best walleye fishing in all of North America. Oh, yeah, nice fish! Yeah. Woo! Woo! Yeah, that's a... Most come here to put a hook in the water and then go home. But there's about 60 or so hardy Minnesotans who live in the angle year-round, many of whom run fishing lodges like Jason and Lisa Goulet. It takes a unique blend of personality traits to really make a go of this. Making a go of it here usually means leaving here. Even the most mundane tasks involve a certain amount of shuttle diplomacy. Grocery shopping is once a week, and that's an hour and 15 minutes one way. First, residents have to notify Canadian authorities that they're about to cross the border. I'm at Jim's Corner, and I'm heading into the War Road border. Then, it's a 60-mile or so trek through Canada, back to the U.S. boundary line, to cross back into Minnesota and the nearest town. It pretty much takes up your day. I mean, I realize it's only a 150-mile round trip or whatever, but with all your stops, I mean, that's five, six hours every, every time. The Goulets, at least, have help in managing this lifestyle. They have eight kids. Yes, eight. The girls, all seven of them, help out their mom making custom quilts. All right, bud, you can take over on these if you want. While Jack, their only boy, helps his dad with the ice fishing shacks. The Goulet's brood make up about a third of the student body at the Angle's tiny one-room schoolhouse, Minnesota's last. Wow, good. You're picking these up. Linda Lemie has been teaching here for 30 years, even teaching her own children whom she raised in the angle, too. To have a slumber party, you know, my girls were just so disappointed because their friends had to have a passport if they wanted to come up for a slumber party. Just for a slumber yes, party. Yes, yes. <laughs> so it, it is different, but we've just, you know, gotten used to it, and it just seems uh, normal. <laughs> there isn't room to house high school students here, though. For that, the older kids have to border hop. For some, it starts long before dawn. They arrive by boat from some of the Angles Islands, that are also part of the U.S., to catch a school bus. A few stops later, the driver finds himself at that roadside video phone. Hello, I'm calling from Jim's Corner. Reporting the names of every student on the bus. Carlson, Megan. Heading to their Minnesota high school by way of Canada, in the dark. By sunup, we got to wondering if maybe life would be easier if the Angle were just part of Canada. Well, turns out they tried that back in the 90s. It is a part of the United States called the Northwest Angle. The Angle made big news when it threatened to secede from the U.S. over a fish dispute. Turns out that walleye caught on the Canadian side of the lake couldn't be brought back to the U.S. side. And that made fishermen and Northwest Angle resident Gary Dietzler pretty mad. 
Did you ever imagine that it would become this big trade no, dispute? No, <laughs> We were just trying to get a couple fish. <laughs> Keep the resort going. <laughs> it was partly his idea to join Canada, mainly as a stunt to get publicity for the fishermen's cause. And it worked. The Great Walleye War, as it came to be known, ended amicably. The Northwest Angle remained part of the U.S., and the walleye's nationality seemed to matter no more. Since then, things have remained as they usually are here, quiet and serene and remote. The Northwest Angle may be an orphan of the Atlas, but that's just the way the folks at the top of the nation like it.